Welcome again. In this session, we're going to be reading、uh, Luke chapter 12, verses 35 through 48. The title of this is "Always Be Ready." Let's start at verse 35. So this is Luke chapter 12, verse 35. Let your waist be dressed and your lamps burning. Be like men watching for their Lord, when he returns from the wedding feast. For when he comes and knocks, they may they may immediately open to him. Now, the way the way Jesus is talking here is that he wants you to be so ready. He wants you to be right there at the door, ready to open the door when he knocks. Okay, not oh Lord, give me a minute. No. He wants you to immediately open to him in great respect, great reverence,、um, and in promptness. Verse thirty-seven. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord will find watching when he comes. Most certainly, I tell you that he will dress himself, make them recline, and will come and serve them. They will be blessed if he comes in the second or third watch. And finds them so. See, the second or third watch would be the latest parts of the night. Okay, that would be like the the, the time that that would be like the times when uh, normally uh, people would be sleeping around those times. Verse thirty nine. But know this: that if the master of the house had known in what hour the thief was coming, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore, be ready also for the Son of Man. Now, again, I've said this in many, many videos, many of my other videos, but I'll say this again: the term "Son of Man" comes from the Greek, or excuse me, the Hebrew term "Ben Adam," son of Adam. Okay,、uh, what does that mean? Well, you know, back in、uh, Genesis chapter three,、uh, after the fall of man, the so-called fall of man.、Um, The promise was that the seed of Eve, or you know, impl- im- implying the seed of the seed of Adam, would crush the serpent's head. Okay, so that was the first promise, and and you know, actually the first direct and explicit promise and prophecy of the coming Messiah. So the term "son of Adam," "son of man," "ben Adam," explicitly. Points to the Messiah. Okay, I've heard it said that、uh, you know in the Jewish world. Now we got to remember everything we're, we're reading here is from a Jew, from Jews, and of the Jewish Messiah. So in the Jewish mind, the term "Son of Man" means more in 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 regards to Messiahship than Son of God. Okay, so in the Jewish mind. Son of God doesn't mean Messiah as much as Son of Man does. Okay, so Jesus said, or Yeshua said, therefore be ready also, for the Son of Man, Ben Adam, the seed of Adam, is coming in an hour that you don't expect him. Very, very, very interesting. Jesus basically said this over and over again, and we got it recorded over and over again in in the various gospels that he said that 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 he is coming in an hour that you don't expect him. Now, some people believe that he came seventy A.D. Spiritually speaking, no,、uh, not at all. He didn't come with great power and great glory with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all the ungodly and to and to rule and reign in Jerusalem.、Uh, As it says in in、uh, Micah chapter, I believe it's Micah chapter four,、uh, Micah chapter two, and in Isaiah chapter two.、Um, so it says there that when 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 the Messiah comes back, he's going to rule and reign using the Torah as his law from Jerusalem. That has not happened. Uh, it says that not one stone will be left upon another. That has not happened. We still have stones left upon another in Jerusalem. Okay, so、um, yeah, he did not come back yet,、uh, and he will come back. It says in an hour you don't expect him. And I believe he'll come back in an hour when there's so much apostasy, so much deception, so many people that are deceived. 
in so many people that are blinded by the devil, blinded by the world, that they they don't even think about the coming of, of Jesus. Um, you know, it says in the book of Revelation that Satan deceived the whole world. Can you imagine? I mean, you know, there's a saying that says you can fool some of the people some of the time, but not all the people all the time. But it says basically in the book of Revelation that, that Satan had the ability, and he actually did, fool pretty much all the people all the time. Of course, that's not including the real, true elect of God, the few that are really God's chosen people. I'm not, talk, I'm not talking about people who go to church because there are most of the people who go to church are not part of God's kingdom, okay? Um, and that's another whole story all by itself. So, uh, verse 41, Peter said to him, Lord, are you telling this parable to us or to everybody? Good question, Peter. The Lord said, who then is the faithful and wise steward? Now, you see, Jesus is looking for a steward. He's looking for a steward that is faithful and wise. Faithful and wise, okay? You have to be faithful to the Lord and you have to be wise. Who then is, is the faithful and wise steward whom the Lord will set over his household? So the faithful and wise steward is the one that the Lord will set over his household. There's a lot of people in churches today and in different various religious groups, they're looking to be set over the, uh, the household of the Lord, so to speak. They're looking to be priests, they're looking to be pastors, they're looking to be leaders within uh, their religious circle. But Yeshua himself, Jesus said, you have to be faithful and you have to be wise. Then the Lord will set you over his household to give them their portion of food at the right at the right times. Blessed is that servant whom the Lord is finding doing so when he comes. So again, let's go back to verse 42. The Lord said, Who then is the faithful and wise steward whom the Lord will set over his household to give them their portion of food at the right times? Okay, so this is a steward that is doing his job. Okay, doing his job, uh, serving his fellow men. Okay, Do doing his job the way a steward is supposed to be doing his job. Uh, again, verse 43, blessed is that steward whom the Lord will find doing so when he comes. Verse 44, truly I tell you that he will set him over all that he has. Think about that for a second. <laughs> Actually, think about that for a little bit more than a second, but <laughs> you know what I mean. Um, if you are faithful and you are wise and you are doing, doing, okay? That's what Jesus said. He's looking for someone who's doing, not someone who's just believing or accepting, uh, but doing, okay? It says that God will set him over all that he has. Can you imagine? Think about all that God has. What does God have in his possession? Can you imagine... God setting you over all that he has? What a profound thought. Verse 45, but if that servant says in his heart, uh, here we go, but if that servant says in his heart, now he's not saying it out loud, he's just thinking within himself, my Lord, it delays in his coming. My Lord, uh, he's, he's taking his time. I got time, I got time. I got time. And he begins to beat the men servants, so mistreats the men servants instead of serving them and maid servants, and to eat and drink and, and to be drunken. Then the Lord of that servant will come in a day when he isn't expecting him and in an hour that he doesn't know. Okay? Now, again, in context here, uh, we're not. Not everybody is in the dark when it comes to the coming of the Lord. Not everybody's in the dark. Nobody can tell you the day or the hour. Uh, however, uh, we know, generally speaking, what season it is, uh, you know, in the, in the full scope, the entire scope of, of history. We know what season it is. Now, and let me tell you, let me just interject here. This is the season of great apostasy. This is the season of the great falling away. This is the season where the church is not teaching and preaching and practicing what they should teach, preach, and practice. 
They're too caught up in this fake counterfeit love and fake counterfeit grace and fake counterfeit faith. Sorry, but I just had to say that. Actually, I'm not sorry. <laughs> but, um, I had to say that anyway. It's the truth. It is the truth. So the, 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 the servant that is thinking, oh, God, is, I got time. I got time to have fun. I got time to party. I got time to mis. I can mistreat my men servants. I hey, I got I got time. Yeah, I, uh, you know, some people think they're invincible. Some people think they won't die tonight. When they do, <laughs> when they will. Some people think that they won't. You know, they'll 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 go on for a long time. When they won't. So the Lord of that servant will come in a day when he isn't expecting him. So that is the servant that is not doing what he's supposed to do. That is the sinful servant. That is the sinful servant. The sinful servant is oblivious, is blind, is uh, fools. I mean, foolish, uh, and and is not aware of what time the Lord is going to come. He's not aware that the coming of the Lord is actually sooner than he thinks, and therefore he doesn't prepare. So again, verse 46, then the Lord of that servant will come in a day when he, is, when, he, when he isn't expecting him and in an hour that he doesn't know and will cut him in two. <laughs> Ooh, this is the meek and mild and lovely Jesus who is just a, you know, uh, uh, the nicest guy ever who will never, ever, you know, do anything wrong to anybody. He wouldn't hurt a flea. Or so a lot of people think. He says, more or less, that when he comes back and he finds servants, supposedly his servants, doing what they're not supposed to do, he will bring out the chainsaw. He will bring out the axe and he will cut them into. Okay, it will make the movies look like, you know, <laughs> it will make the movies uh, look like uh, just a walk in the park, okay? He will cut him into and place his portion with the unfaithful. What's that referring to? Where does the unfaithful go? Eternal punishment. Eternal hell. Yeah, it's true. Remember, God really doesn't love everybody. He says, Jacob I love, but Esau I hated. Even before Esau had any chance to do anything wrong, while he was still in the womb, before he even spoke a word. Remember, this is... Remember, not everybody is a child of God. Uh, very, very few, in fact, are real children of God. You have to be truly born again. And I'm not talking about just believing in Jesus, saying the sinner's prayer, going forward in Billy Graham crusade. No. I'm talking about really being born again. If you're really born again, you don't need a, pre a preacher to tell you. You don't need a pastor to tell you. You don't need anybody to tell you. You know that everything is gone. All the old is gone. I have died and now I am risen with Christ. All of the old is gone. The old sinful self, the sinful nature that I had, the, the, the desire and the lust for sin that I had is completely abolished. It is dead six feet under and now I am alive in Christ and I am full of the Spirit of God, the very Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, the very spirit that created the world. You don't need anybody to tell you if you're really born again. I mean, in the, in the earthly sense, you don't need anybody to, to remind you that you have been born. You know that you've been born. How much more when you're really born of God? If you're born of man or born of woman, you know, you don't need anybody to tell you you were born. You know you were born. You'll figure that out. <laughs> you know, sooner or later, you'll figure that out. Hopefully sooner than later. But how much more if you're born of God? Verse 47. That servant who knew his Lord's will and didn't prepare 
nor do what he wanted, will be beaten with many stripes. Okay? Now, they say that in those days, uh, stripe meant a whip, okay? Uh, a stripe was, um, was one, you know, basically lash of the whip. And they say that, uh, it, you know, many times they used what they called a Roman cat of nine tails whip, okay? That whip had actually nine whips together. It was more like a, it was more like a cord of whips, Okay, and on the end of each one of those nine strands, uh, nine, uh, whatever you might call it, um, uh, nine strings or nine ribbons that w that they used to rip whip people. On the end of each one had you know pieces of broken glass or metal or bone that would dig into your skin. So Jesus said that that servant who knew the Lord's will, who knew the Lord's will, and didn't prepare. Nor do, nor do what he wanted, he will be beaten with many stripes. Yeah, Jesus is talking about cutting people in two. He's talking about beating people with stripes. Uh, yeah, this is the welcome to the true Jesus of the Bible. Welcome to the real Jesus, okay? Not your golden calf Jesus that just sits there and adorns your, your church uh, wall or your uh, stained glass window and and it's just uh, you know meekly holding a lamb and or you know petting a lamb or carrying a lamb on his shoulders or uh, you know uh, just just a like a golden calf just adorning just just decorating your heart decorating your life decorating your home decorating your church it says there, oh, it's so beautiful. Oh, it looks so great. It looks so marvelous. It's so valuable. Oh, Jesus is so valuable to me. But it never speaks against your sin like the real true Jesus does. It never rebukes you of your sin. It never tells you to repent of your sin. It never leads you in righteousness. It just more or less just blesses you as, you know, blesses you in your sinfulness. That's not the true Jesus. That is the, what I call golden calf Jesus. Verse 48. But he who didn't know, okay, if you didn't know the Lord's will and you did things worthy of stripes, will be beaten with few stripes. <laughs> Jesus is saying, you're going to be beaten no matter what, what, you know, which way you look at it. If you do wrong, whether you know what's wrong or whether you don't know what's wrong, you're going to get a beaten. Not, more, not, not just a beaten, but a good whipping. And not just a good whipping, but a good, a good terrible tearing of your flesh and, and, and tearing off your skin, okay? Not just causing bruises, but bleeding, lots of bleeding. The last half of verse 48, to, whom, to whomever much is given, of him much will be required. So this is knowledge. The more knowledge you have, the more you're required, okay? Now God, of course, Jesus doesn't want you to be stupid either. He wants you to be responsible. And to, and to whom much was entrusted of him, more will be asked. So, so a lot of people want more and more from God, more from God, more from God. Bless me, Lord. Teach me, Lord. All this kind of stuff. Well, you need to understand that's good, but you need to be prepared for the responsibility and to follow through with the responsibility of that. Verse 49. Oh, excuse me. Verse 49, we're going to be reading in the next, um, in the next session. So, Hey, we talked about a lot in this session. I know I said a lot of things that uh, maybe might uh, be a, not set so pretty with some of you modern day corrupt Christian people. But uh, uh, hey, I'm here to tell you the truth. I'm here to read the scriptures and tell you what the depth and the context of the scriptures really entail. So I hope it was a blessing to you. And uh, as you go your way, again, may God enlighten the eyes of your understanding and show you great and mighty things. Thanks again for listening.